Hi. There's a lot of discussion on the internet, especially YouTube, on the question of whether or not the Apollo missions actually took place. One of the questions which I found was not really addressed is could the lunar ascent module actually have lifted off the moon, reached sufficient velocity in order to dock without incident with the orbiting command module? Just as a brief disclaimer, I'm using standard mechanics, basically first year physics university level, some approximations, and I'm not a specialist in rocket science, but I am familiar with basic physics principles. The lunar module, consisting of two parts, allegedly touched down on the moon for the first time in July 1969 with Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong aboard while well, Michael Collins was in orbit in the command modules going around the moon. After their historic visit, to leave the moon, only the ascent module containing a single central rocket engine would be propelled upwards. As shown in the diagram, the lower part of the limb remained stationary on the moon. Here is a still photo taken from a video footage of a later Apollo mission, which is quite well known. Curiously, no plume of rocket exhaust is indeed visible. This is odd, since any hot object would give off electromagnetic radiation, even in a perfect vacuum, and therefore should be visible. The ascent module is seen here approaching the command module, which stayed in roughly a circular orbit around the moon. One notices also the tiny aspect of the Earth in the background of the shot. And of course, as usual, no stars at all are seen in the perfectly black sky. Eventually, and without incident, the ascent module would dock with the mothership, the command module, containing one astronaut. This was achieved in Apollo 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17. No incident of any kind, technical or otherwise, occurred. We now consider the question of the escape speed of the ascent module. Consider the fact that the rocket impulse is given by the ejection of a great deal of mass with downward velocity u. The upward thrust is opposite to u and is a product of the ejection velocity times the combustion rate. No additional external force is necessary to drive the ship upwards. According to the data I was able to find, the ascent module dry mass is about 2,150 kilograms. The propellant mass, 2,353 kilograms. The exhaust speed, that is U, is about 2.2 kilometers per second. First, let's consider the simple model of the free space rocket equation obtained by Newton's second law of motion. The final velocity v is u, the ejection velocity, times the natural log of the ratio of the initial mass to final mass of the rocket. Surprisingly, this equation does not depend on the combustion rate, but in fact, the combustion rate will determine not only the thrust, but the burn time, which, according to what I've read, was about 460 seconds. Plugging in the numbers, we get the following approximation, that is 2.2 kilometers per second times the log of 2.1. This turns out to be about 1.6 kilometers per second for the velocity of the ascent module. But this approximation neglects the effect of lunar gravity on the ascent module as it leaves the surface. What is the required rendezvous velocity for the ascent module? Well, it must be as close as possible to the velocity of the command module in low lunar orbit around the moon. The mathematical expression, again obtained by Newton's second law and the law of gravity, is that the orbital velocity is about the square root of gm over r. g is the universal gravitational constant, m is the mass of the moon, 
and R is the radius. The values are displayed. Again, this expression neglects the altitude of the command module above the surface of the moon. Only the moon radius has been taken into account. In fact, this represents only a minor adjustment. Again, plugging in the numbers, you get about 1.68 kilometers per second for this orbital velocity. So, comparing the two velocities, the command module has a velocity of 1.68 kilometers per second. The velocity of the ascent module is 1.63 kilometers per second. As you can see, the difference is 0.05 kilometers per second, or about 180 kilometers per hour. Given the approximations and the assumptions, it's really too close to call or to answer the question. Let us now try to improve the model by including the payload that the ascent module must contain as it leaves the lunar surface. Surely the weight of the astronauts, some of the equipment, the, the moon rocks that were carried, kilos, I suppose. Well, I'm assuming 180 kilos of payload, and we do the calculation again. This time, we get a log of 2.01 or a final velocity of the ascent module of 1.54 kilometers per second. A more significant effect is obviously that the ascent module must overcome lunar gravity. It's one-sixth of that of the Earth. The correction factor underlined in red is independent of the mass, as expected from Galileo and Newton's laws of free fall motion. But it depends on delta t, the burn time. It is difficult to assess this correction, since the trajectory of the ascent module was probably curved. However, if we take delta t to be one-eighth of the nominal burn time, and g to be 1.6 meters per second squared, we do get a final velocity of 1.44 kilometers per second. Under these assumptions, the rendezvous and docking would have been extremely difficult. The command module would have had a relative speed of 864 kilometers per hour. Thanks for watching.